hello and welcome to another fantastic audio tutorial. My name is Dave Bodie from JobOno.com, bringing you this tutorial exclusively for audio.tutsplus.com. In this tutorial, we're going to check out another fantastic contact library from the good folks at SoundIron. Now, I apologize for my voice. Everyone in my household is a little bit sick right now, so that's why everything sounds a little rumbly and gravelly. What we're going to be taking a look at is a contact library called High School Drum Corps. You can check that out here at soundiron.com. And what this is, is a collection of high school marching instruments, uh, specifically snares, bass drums, and quads. And it includes a large kind of concert bass drum, a 48 inch concert bass drum in a hall type environment. All of these are what they call deep sampled. So they have a good number of velocities uh, between five and it looks like 11 here and 10 X round Robin on just about all of those. So they sampled a lot of these drums two different ways. They sampled them inside in a, what they call a hall or uh, what it's labeled in the instrument patches is a band room. And so they have a little bit of wetness, a little bit of reverb on there. And then they've sampled them outside as well. So those are gonna be pretty dry with just the hint of a little bit of slap echo in there. It's very, very subtle. They've done a marching snare drum and done a handful of articulations there. They have five tuned marching bass drums, right? Between 20 and 36 inches doing a few different articulations there, some rolls, rim clicks, strikes with mallets, that sort of thing. You got the concert bass drum. Then what they have is kind of full ensemble unison strikes and rim clicks. These are where you're going to hear the quad ensemble as well as the bass drums and the snares. They've done these inside and outside. And then they also have, they have some field recordings and some soundscapes, some general parade ambiences, that kind of stuff. Like I said before, this is a contact library and it does require the full version of contact 4.2 or better. This library sells for about $49 US. It's available for a direct download or on a DVD. Installed, it's about 737 megabytes. It's a little bit less when you download it because it's compressed and then it expands out and there you go. Now this installs very similar to Antidrum, which I did a tutorial on. You can check that out. So. If you're curious about how to install this, check out the anti-drum tutorial here on audio.tutsplus.com because this library installs the exact same way. You download it using a little application. It self extracts. You move it over to your library. You tell contact where it is. Bada boom, you're off to the races. Now, if you want to know the specifics about this library, please check out the PDF documentation here. Let's take a look at a couple of these patches because the, these are not quote unquote powered by contact. They won't be able to be loaded in the libraries. So you can easily find them in your files view right here. And I have a folder called sound iron with a bunch of libraries in there. And you can see it's right here, drum core version two. So we got a folder here called instruments and these are the patches that you'll get. So let's load these up and check them out. So this is drum core all band room. And so what you have is concert bass drum, right? Real beefy, real woofy. In fact, it's 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 got a real, real hot signal. Two or more hits of that. And you can expect that the signal will clip inside of this instrument. Then we have the snare drums. And in fact, it's just one snare drum. It's kind of these green articulations here. And so we have just center strikes here. I believe there's four keys. That's kind of helpful. It's not pitch shifted over those four keys. It's it's four keys that are that are firing the same sample set. It gives you you know more than one key to play, which is which is nice. And then we have flams. And we have rim clicks. Now at the harder velocities, you actually hear maybe a small little bounce there some interesting kind of nuance. Then we have some rolls. Now they have some crescendos, some loops and some single shots in here as well. So right here at the end of the snares, these are single shots. So once you hit this, it's gonna play the roll here, right? 
and then we have some sustains here with release notes as well. So when you release that note, it gives you a little hit to kind of finish the roll off. And then we have ensemble strikes. And we have three kind of unison hits, and then we have three keys that are mapped to the rim clicks. Now, I think these are really the gem of these collections. You know, bass drums, snare drums, that's all fine and good. But these are what make this library sound really, really huge. I'm not exactly sure how they've sampled these, but they definitely have that ensemble-y, it's not a whole bunch of samples that are quantized hitting all at the same time. So these are awesome for kind of hits and punctuations. You can't really do fast rhythms on these because, you know, they're not super tight. It just, it gets a little bit mushy, so. Now, we also have almost the same kind of collection of things with the field. The difference here is that instead of a concert bass drum, we now have tuned bass drums, five tuned bass drums that we have. And each one of these are mapped to two keys. So we have the lowest one. And so you can kind of play these. Which is kind of cool. And you can hear my keyboard clicking in there. And we have rim clicks for all of these. And then there's a collection of kind of rolls here. And so this kind of section here are single shot where you hit them and it's going to play that roll. And then the last couple keys are kind of sustained, kind of single stroke rolls. So these are not, these are not bounced rolls. These are not right, right, left, left, right, right. These are right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. And you know, they have that kind of high school vibe where they're not very super fast and they're not very consistent. You know, they're not, these aren't played by pro players. These are, you know, it's got that kind of high school feel. And we have the snares and you can hear that these are a good bit more dry than the band room instrument. And in fact, with some of these, you can hear birds chirping, but that kind of goes with the, uh, the whole feel of this kind of out, outdoor field recording thing here. And so we have center strikes here. We have flams. We have rim clicks. We have one key that's mapped to a rim shot. And we have some rolls. There's, there's no single shot rolls, sustained rolls. And then we have the ensemble heads. Right there is essentially all of the samples in this entire collection. Now, you, you may have noticed there are no kind of individually sampled quads. There's also no cymbals. Both of these you would find in most marching bands that you'll see. In the comments on their website, it, it does say that an expansion is planned at some point. Now, cymbals, you can find there is a patch of kind of orchestral cymbals, which are the same thing as, as what would be used in a drum corps. And so you can get away with those. And we'll look at those a little bit later in a little piece that I put together. But there's nothing in contact that mimics the sound of the quads or quints, which are kind of a tom with one head on top, no head on the bottom. They're very, very shallow. They may be four or five inches deep. And they're almost rototomish, a little bit different tonal characteristic, but uh, they're tuned crazy high. Do, 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 do. You know, so you can do some crazy fast rolls and, and things of that nature doesn't have that. They are in the ensemble strikes. But if you had your heart set on those being in there, they are not. But there's still a lot of cool stuff that you can do without those. Now, these other patches, a lot of them are kind of variations of what we just went over. So the drum corps bass concert band room is exactly what you'd expect. It's just the concert bass drum, but it's been pitch stretched over the entire range. Then we have the tuned field drums. Now these are just exactly the same thing that's in this all field patch. This is just a patch with just those in there. Now we have drum ensemble field. That's going to be those hits. Then we have drum core marching ambiences. These are just kind of the ambient parade noise stuff.
as well as some other kind of marching band routines in there as well. The only one that's a little bit different is this drum corps ensemble band room right here. Because that's, that's kind of the same thing as you'll find in the drum corps all band room, except they've added quads to these ensemble strikes. Another interesting patch here is this thing called the Mega Mixer. Now what this patch is, is a way to kind of customize the layout in the instruments that are available to you here. So you have 12 little kind of modules here. These are these little TV looking screens, these retro TV looking screens. It comes kind of preset up with some stuff, but I'll show you how this works here. We'll go through and I'll turn all of them off, kind of reinitialize it here. And so here's how it works. You go to one module and say, well, we want to start maybe with outdoor bass drums. All right, so you have that loaded up. Now you can set the low and high key. So say we want to start here, right, in that C, and then we want to go up to this C sharp, C1 to C sharp one. Okay, and so we just mapped that particular drum right there. Now in here, you will see this kind of drop down of the instrument and kind of articulation. So for the bass drum, there are five different bass drums. And uh, for, for some reason, the, the one that's labeled the highest is actually the largest drum, it's the lowest. Labels on these are a little bit wacky. Then you see mid two, then you see mid one, and then low there. And so you can kind of load up a little custom patch here with just what you want and kind of load it with the key ranges that you want, which is kind of cool. Depending on your particular project, that could be pretty useful. And then there's some settings here. So if we engage the EQ here, and we jump over here to, to this one, let me make sure. These are global kind of settings. So all of these, these EQ filter and reverb effects in here, these are all global, so they will affect all of the samples. You can't load up one for each one of these. Now real quick, looking at another one of these, it loads default with these kind of three controller panels here, all right? It has a convolution reverb, so it has a bunch of different stuff in here that you can load up. And click it on. And it gives you a little bit of control, you know, dry, wet, size, low pass filter, high pass filter, delay. Um, and then they have some other kind of wacky effects. Then we have EQ and filter, change the EQ around. Nothing too crazy. Then they have this thing called arpeggiator. Now this is kind of interesting. Basically what this is gonna do, if you hold on one key, it's basically gonna arpeggiate that one key. It's not gonna pitch shift it, it's just gonna play that one key, right? If we add another key, And so it can kind of be an interesting way to get some different rhythm combinations. You can kind of change the level of each one of those steps. In that arpeggiator, you can change the rhythm so you can do some faster stuff. Um, and it's got a whole bunch of other controls over the percentage random, the number of hits that'll do in order. So we can set this to two hits. Three. It's the same pattern, but it's playing three notes on each one. Let me slow it down here so you can, you can hear how that's uh, working there. And so that can be a way to kind of to spark some creativity into some drum patterns, which is pretty cool. I like that feature a lot. And we have some other different things here, attack, offset, velocity, attenuation, I believe. It's th that basically compresses the dynamic range. Then we have this kind of micro tuning. I believe this tunes in one one hundredth of a step there. So you can, you can go up just a little bit. A whole bunch of stuff going on in here. What I like to do is uh, load up a little project all right, here we are in Reaper. I have contact loaded up here and I recorded a little drum cadence here. I wanna play it down for you.
what you're hearing there is a couple of different patches. If we jump into contact here, you can see what we have going on. Now the main one that I build this around is the drum core all field. That's kind of what I laid down first. And that's got most of the stuff in it. Now what I did to make this sound a little bit bigger, I wanted to give it that feel that the drum core was a little bit larger. So if you look at the way this is recorded, you essentially have five bass drum players, one snare drum guy, and then a whole bunch of ensemble hits. So I wanted to kind of fill out the snares a little bit more and the bass drums a little bit. So one thing that I did in contact, I duplicated the same patch. So I have drum core all field down here again. And then all I did was I tuned it down. So we have this and then this. And I use that tuning feature inside the instrument there. Then in the audio playback, what I did was I delayed it a little bit. Now one is panned right, one's panned left to give it a little more space, a little bit more depth. It's compressed just a tiny bit to keep things in check. And then what I did is I added a tiny bit of delay. Here's what it sounds like dry. I'll add the wet to it. Now, one thing you might be seeing is this parameter here, the length time is kind of animating here. And that's because I have gone in here and I have used a feature called parameter modulation. And that's really easy to do when you just click on whatever the thing is that you want to modulate and you go under here under param parameter modulation. And so once I did that, I clicked LFO and by default, it looks something like this, right? Which is obviously absurd because it's going just under a Hertz, you know, blink, blink um, with a sine wave. And so it's going all the way up to eight seconds. And then, uh, so that's no good. So the idea here is that I wanted to delay this track. It's pitch shifted. But I, I didn't want it exactly at the same time as the other one, because, you know, in an ensemble type situation, no one's going to hit exactly the same time. They might be pretty tight, but there's probably going to be just a little bit of irregularity there, especially in a high school ensemble, right? So I delayed it, but I didn't want the delay to be static because then every hit would sound essentially the same. It would sound like, you know, every snare hit would kind of sound like a, a flam, if you will. And um, all these hits would sound very, very similar. And so what I wanted to do is take this length time and have it just kind of oscillate, have it modulate just a little bit. So real easy to do. I go in here, click on LFO. And then I set this to something like 0.05% because I don't want it to do it a whole bunch. I just want it to do it a little bit. Let me speed this up here so I can see what's going on. All right, so this is going to put a maximum, okay, almost five, I guess, milliseconds on here. And it's going to go back down to one. Let's click this off for a second. So I have that to start. Then what I wanted, because I, I didn't want some of them to be exactly together. So I pushed up this value here. Um, and let me, let me center these both because that sounds a little funny. So you can, all right. See, if we just left it at a constant, everything would sound just kind of like a flam. And not exactly what I was looking for. So I wanted to add a little bit of delay here. And then I'll push on this to add a little bit more. So that it just has a little bit of kind of fluctuation. And then turn this down real slow. Now, because it's essentially playing the same sample and it's being pitch shifted down, it does occasionally sound phasey if they're both panned perfectly center. If you pan them right and left, they start to sound pretty nice and open again. And just between those two right there, we have drum core left and drum core right. It 
kind of got what I was looking for. Now I did want to beef up the snares just a little bit more. So what I did was I added two more snare tracks in here. And what I could have done was add one of the snare patches in here. Although the snare field is essentially the same samples that wouldn't have worked exactly right. If I put the snare band room in there, that's the same snare, almost an identical pitch and tuning of that snare, but it's wet. And so I didn't really want to mess with kind of uh, having some super dry samples and some wet samples. So what I did was I just added a standard contact snare drums patch here, which is kind of orchestral snares, which, which is kind of nice. It adds a little bit more kind of beefy snare in it. The only downside to this is that they don't have all the articulation. So there's no flams, there's no rim clicks. In these particular ones, there's no, they don't even have rim shots. You know, they, they just have kind of center strikes and some different rolls and stuff. Then what I did for the other snare drum is I added classic rock drums. The reason why I wanted this one is because it has a good bit more velocity layers and round robin samples than this snare drum set here. Uh, if you look at the mapping editor, there's really only maybe seven different velocity samples. There's no round robin. It's just one kind of sample, seven velocity layers. So in some of those kind of roll type things, this patch sounds a little bit machine gunny, but we can get away with it. if We layer it something that has a little bit more kind of uh, variation like this classic rock drums plugin does. So I use the snare drums on this. And the cool thing about this one is that this does actually have rim clicks in it and rim shots as well as regular snare hits. So this actually worked out pretty good and I'll play you what I did. And then all I did was I copied the MIDI down and then I just kind of compressed. I took out all the other instruments. That sounds a little bit sloppy jalopy, but it's, it's mixed pretty far down in there. And so with these other two, It really adds a little bit more of that snary sound, which really helped a lot. And the other thing that I did was I added just kind of a symbol thing in here. And you can just go into the, the database here, symbols. I loaded up these. The only thing that I did to it was I took off the reverb. I did the same thing with the uh, snare samples here. I just deselected that and I routed reverb a little bit differently. But in this symbols instrument, the two things that I really wanted were these kind of open crashes and these kind of more muted where it's a crash and then and then a mute. There's actually a, a whole bunch of different ways to articulate those, but uh, those two kind of mimicked most closely to kind of how marching cymbals are played. So I layered those in there. I think it really helped bring this whole thing together to really sell it because without the symbols, it's all right. With the symbols, it really, it really makes it pretty nice sounding. The only other thing that I did inside of contact is I routed all of these to a convolution reverb. Now I could have used an external reverb plugin, but I decided to do it this way. And so I loaded up a convolution reverb on one of the auxes here. I sent a wee bit of each one of these. Let me collapse these down here. I just sent a little bit of all of these to the aux input, and then I brought it in on another channel here. You can see down here on the verb. I'm gonna add just a little EQ here to get rid of kind of the low junk because a lot of low end and reverb does not sound so hot. And I rolled off a little bit of the highs as well. I really think that helps kind of uh, glue this whole thing together. And so there you go. That is a high school drum core by Sound Iron. It's pretty cheap, you know, $49. And it has a whole bunch of really cool elements that I like. You know, I, I like the fact that the snare drums have a ton of velocity layers to them. 
and I like the I like the round robin in there because that really helps to get rid of that kind of machine gunny effect. I also like a lot of the other sounds that are in here. I, I like these rim clicks. And I think that they can be useful. For other things, you know, you don't have to pigeonhole this library um, as just being something that you would use and, you know, something that needs marching drums. Uh, that's, that's not the case at all. Because a lot of these things can be used in different ways, like an orchestral kind of piece that needed a lot of action-y type percussion could use a lot of these sample sets, like these rim clicks and, and things. Those would work really well, as well as these ensemble hits. Those would lend themselves very well to like a, a very busy action-oriented thing with strings and brass and things of that nature. As well as the, uh, the concert bass drum will also lend itself well to that kind of stuff too. There are a lot of things in here and the things that it does have have a lot of variety, a lot of velocities and a lot of round robins and things of that nature. And these, uh, these ensemble hits here are super, super cool. High School Drum Corps by Sound Iron. Thanks for watching this tutorial. Again, my name is Dave Bodie from JoeBono.com, bringing you this tutorial exclusively for audio.tutsplus.com, and we'll see you around. Thanks for watching.